So let me do a quick rundown of the part selection and then I'm gonna get straight to building this PC. Skip ahead if you wanna skip through this little ramble and you can get straight into the hands-on PC build. Processor Ryzen 7 1700X, amazing performance. Check out benchmarks I have on my channel when I have the full review of the Ryzen 7 lineup. Motherboard, none other than from Oris. The AX370 Gaming 5 motherboard has RGB lighting. Look at this, looks amazing in white. This will set you back $200, the motherboard will. For the fan, I actually used a 125 fan that came on an old A series processor, but the performance is there. It was free because I already had it, decided to go ahead and put it on. For RAM, I have two eight gigabyte sticks of Corsair Vengeance in white, 3000 megahertz. They look cool, I got them because white and you know, it matches the motherboard and also matches this case. This is the new Fantex Eclipse Series P400. So this quite possibly is the best mid tower case. Has lighting included, RGB lighting included on the bottom. This one comes in white, sets you back just $80. That's amazing. That is like the most competitive price. I've heard that the quality is on up there with a full tempered glass side panel. Really similar in size and dimensions to the NZXT S340 Elite that I have done some PC builds. So really excited about this case for just $80. Power supply, got the EVGA 650 watt P2 Platinum Certified Power Supply Modular. Amazing, efficient power. And we like this modular, so it's gonna be really easy with cable management. And for storage, guys, it's an NVMe M.2 solid state drive from Samsung, the 960 Pro. So you could definitely get by with a lot less, but this is gonna make your system like insanely snappy, insanely fast. We're talking sequential read and write speeds of mind-blowing proportions. So for video editing, also this M.2 NVMe solid state drive is amazing. And on this motherboard, the Aorus X370, we have a slot right there for the M.2. It's gonna go nice and pretty in there. And now guys, for the star of the show, along with Ryzen, this is the NVIDIA GTX 1080 Ti from Aorus. So this card looks amazing. It's a triple slot card. It's pretty thick, has three 100 millimeter fans, a really large copper base plate. So amazing cooling, has RGB lighting, by the fans and up on the side so that Oris is gonna light up look really wicked with the rest of the RGB components. Let's open up this case, guys, and get straight into this PC build. So I like that it has uh, four thumb screws. You can move it with your hand. We're gonna go ahead and set the tempered glass over away from the build. Gonna go ahead and take the back panel off. So we have Two screws on the back, you can move probably with your fingers. Phillips screwdriver, it's gonna make your life easier though. Back panel is successfully removed. Okay guys, I'm gonna look for the included screws with this beautiful Fantex case. So back here guys, that's where they keep the goodies. All the screws, everything you're gonna need to install these components. I'm gonna go and pull this out, they have it right here in the three and a half inch uh, little drive bay. Look at this, Fantex accessory box, Eclipse series. See, they thought, they thought of us, they had us in mind. They knew we were coming and they left us a little surprise package. So pulling this little accessory box out. There we go, there are all the screws. We also have some included zip ties if you wanna make uh, cable management extra tidy. And look how, look, the cable management already is. We have these cutout little grommets. That's awesome for, for routing cables through, so convenient. So let's go ahead and install the power supply. So you see we have a cutout in the back of the case where the power supply can go in. So this platinum power supply actually has a 140 millimeter fan. So I think typically your, your fan's gonna be a little bit smaller than this. This is definitely a pretty beefy power supply, but I'm sure it's gonna fit in this mid tower case. And be sure you guys have, you know, what cables you want already plugged in. So I have Motherboard, CP1, and VGA. I don't have anything else because I'm using a M.2 solid state drive. So grab four of these guys and we're gonna use these to install the power supply. Line the power supply up with four holes. And get going. One, two, and one last one, ladies and gentlemen. Boom. He's in. All right guys, well let's go ahead, set this case down. CPU installation is quite easy. Just lift up the retention lever, line the arrow up with the corresponding arrow on the motherboard. Just set the processor into the socket and thermal compound is pre-applied 
on the stock cooler. Although if you have used it before, you can remove used thermal compound with rubbing alcohol, preferably 90% or higher, and then apply new thermal compound. Just putting a pea size in the center of the CPU heat spreader will do the job. Now installing this cooler has to be the easiest ever. Just latch the two metal clips on each side of the cooler over the motherboard's plastic mounting points. Then just push the lever to the left and it will be secured into place. For RAM, you wanna put it in the RAM module slots two and four as the motherboard indicates. And you will hear it click into place as such. And for four, I'm gonna go ahead and take it back out so you guys can see. You wanna line up the fingers there of the RAM. You can hold it by the heat shield with the little indention within the memory module slot and then it will just click into place guys, just like that, and you're good to go. And before I forget guys, let's put that IO shield in. I always forget to put that IO shield in. See, I almost forget every time guys, so, so get your IO shield out. Mouse and keyboard holes typically facing the top. I love, look at this, this is like chrome, it's like reflective. That's so cool looking. So like I said, top, bottom. You're gonna slide it in just like such, and you will hear it snap into place, my friends. Boom. Boom. Now let's go ahead and start installing our motherboard. Let's count the standoffs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Also have nine corresponding holes on the motherboard. We are gonna go ahead and set this into place. Plenty of room, love this. Like love working in this case so far. Like there is just so much room to work in. Let's get these screws out. Let me get this cables in here. We want to now work on the front umbilical. So that's all these cables here, guys. So you want to route all these little small wires to the front of the case so they can be inserted to the corresponding connections on the front of the board. And I'm going to do that now. So starting off first with HD audio. HD audio is gonna go to the far left. And actually very conveniently, this board tells you right underneath, there's actually even colors to help you differentiate where is where. And it actually tells you in very small writing right underneath which connection goes where, which is really convenient actually, in case you forget. So power LED, positive up at the top. And before I forget, grab the USB 3 cable right there. You see, that's where it's key. That's where there's gonna be a missing uh, pin, so to speak, where you're gonna insert this. And you wanna route this through a grommet in the back, pretty easy, through the front. So just go right in, just like that. Oh, it's easy. Fits like a glove, guys. And over in the back of the case, grab a SATA power cable and connect it to the 12 volt input power LED. Also with the Pantex case, there's an included magnetic RGB strip. So you can go ahead and connect that and place the strip where you would like it. And now it's also a good time to connect the two system fans. I've done so just down here at the bottom of the motherboard. And if you haven't already, go ahead and connect that CPU fan to the top CPU fan header. Okay, so now we're gonna put in the motherboard main power connector. We're gonna run it through a grommet in the back. Sort of wedge it has here on the connection. Boom, clicks right into place. And then we're gonna grab our CPU power cable and we're gonna route that, let's say up through the top left corner here because that's where is the closest place to the CPU power connection. Up here at the top left, this is an eight pin. So you have two little four pins there. This is gonna give, obviously, the CPU power, got the motherboard with power. So I'm gonna go ahead and install the M.2 NVMe solid state drive. This is from Samsung, the 960 Pro. Plenty of storage capacity of 512 gigabytes. So this is the only storage device that I'm going to use initially in this build. Installation is really simple. There's an empty M.2 slot right there. The graphics card is gonna go over that because it's right below the upper highest most PCI Express slot. So I'm just gonna insert it and push in until it snaps into place. And there's a tiny little screw that I just took out and this little screw is gonna hold it securely into place. And there's actually a little opening on the end of the M.2 drive. So you see that screw is gonna go right on top of there. So the M.2 drive is just gonna be really securely in place. 
the up highest most back plate uh, it doesn't look like it's going to get in the way at all but i'm going to do a dry fitting just to make sure i want to be sure no so yeah it actually it's it's like the cooler the plastic cooler protrudes a bit but it fits over just two pci express back plates so just take two back plates out and this card is going to fit actually as it would with the one and a half slot cards you're probably used to. So make sure that the retention lever on the PCI Express slot is in the open position and it will latch into place as you put pressure into this armored connection that's also keyed. So look at the groove within the finger here of the graphics card and, and line it up with the indention in the top slot. Okay, here we go guys. Oh, I, I, I feel just like epic putting this card in. It's so big, but it's gonna be so powerful too. Wow. So this actually requires two eight pins. So 16 pins to power this up. So thankfully, Oris includes in the box this 